Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia, alleluia. What a crazy year this has been. Remember last year when most of our churches were not even able to worship together for Easter? Thanks be to God that unlike so many other denominations that have closed down and are only opening up now, most of our churches were able to be open throughout the period of the last year and the challenges of the COVID virus. Thanks be to God. And they did it safely with masks. Now it took a toll on us. There were challenges in congregations. Pastors had to work like crazy, offering other options. A lot of challenges. And yet the Lord has brought us through it all. We face challenging times today, we know that. I now hear that it's somehow racist to share the gospel of a savior for the entire world and all its people. We face very difficult legal battles in the future. The Equality Act is in front of us, which could radically affect our schools and universities and all of our charitable work. There are many, many challenges, and yet, Christ is risen. I love this wonderful text from St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. That which I received, I delivered also to you, those things of first importance, that Christ died for the sins of all of us, according to the scriptures. It was prophesied in Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, he died for all of our sins, the sins of the whole world. We're all sinners. We're all accountable to God for our sin. And yet we're all as valuable to God as the very blood of Jesus Christ. That he was buried. His body, just like our body, was put in a tomb for us. And that he was raised on the third day day according to the scriptures. Jesus said the scriptures in Jonah, the story of Jonah and the whale, teach this resurrection. That's what Jesus himself said. He was raised on the third day, back from death to life and never to die again with the very physical body that was buried. And he appeared to Cephas, that is Peter, and then to the twelve, and then he appeared to something like 500 brothers all at once, many of whom still remain to this day. And then Paul says, last of all, he appeared to me as one untimely born. Christ is risen. And what does that mean? It means the hard part is done. Paul talks about himself and all these others as witnesses. They actually saw the resurrected Christ. It so captivated all of them, lay people and apostles alike, that they carried this message. It was Laman who started the message in Antioch and the apostles came later, sent Barnabas there, Paul as well, to continue the mission. As witnesses, this message that Christ had been put to death for our sins and raised for our justification, burned in all of their hearts, and they couldn't help but share it. Luther says wonderfully that the resurrection of Christ is like a birth. He says, Paul calls Jesus the head of the church, and in childbirth, the most difficult part is when the head is born, and after that, he says, the body follows quickly and easily. The hard part is over, my friends. Christ's resurrection is the great absolution for the sins of the world. Absolution. This is our message for the world. Believe it and it's yours. This grand absolution applies to us all. Only believe it and it's yours. The body comes quickly and easily after. So also our resurrection Yes, we'll go to a grave, barring his return. We'll go to the grave just like he did. But it shall be for us, as Luther says, just like a short nap 
refreshing and we shall wake up at the resurrection. What a beautiful, beautiful blessing. My friends, Easter is for you. We've been through a lot and there is much in front of us. But we say today and always, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.